In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the best film camera in 2023. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. What's going on YouTube, man? Welcome back to yet another King Jeps episode. So it's been a minute since I've done a sit down video talking about what I feel like is my favorite film camera of the year. Now being that it is only February, it's February, right? <laughs> being that it's only February, I feel like this might be a little bit early, but leading into this new year, it's pretty much the only camera I have been shooting apart from the Bessa R2A. Now, honestly, this might not come to a surprise to a lot of you, especially if you follow me over on Instagram, which you should probably go follow me on because I post exclusive content on there surrounding film photography and digicams, especially street photography. But it might be no surprise that the Nikon F3 is my favorite film camera of 2023. Now in this episode, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about the shooting experience mainly, and I'm also going to be showing you guys a couple of sample photos, and then I'm gonna give you some tips on how to use the camera to maximize the quality of images that you get from it. Also talk about my favorite lenses for the camera that give it the best results. And at the very end, hopefully try to persuade you into picking a Nikon F3 up yourself, because this camera is absolutely amazing, and it's a huge switch up from what I was shooting with last year. All right, let's jump in. All right, so for starters, here is my Nikon F3. Just a quick little rundown of the setup here. I have the Shoot Film Co. leather strap right here. On the front of the camera, I have the HP Finder and also the 35 millimeter 2.8 lens. Sorry, that's the 28 millimeter. So I've actually owned the Nikon F3 for years now. I got one in 2016 and I kept it all the way up until 2020 before I gave it away on the channel for our 100K giveaway. But almost immediately after I gave that one away, I picked up another one and this is currently the one I have in my hands. It's the only camera throughout the years other than the X700 that I have kept and it's again my favorite film camera at the moment. Early this year, I got back to shooting with the Nikon F3. F3. I had picked up some new lenses for it and I was absolutely blown away by the quality and it just reminded me of how good this camera actually is. A couple of key highlights of the camera. The camera features aperture priority with a built-in light meter. The viewfinder is nice and large. On the top it will have a display on the correct shutter speed if you are shooting in aperture priority as well as your aperture. One two thousandths of a second shutter speed. 11 ball bearing advanced lever. This thing is buttery smooth. You got the Nikon F mount of course, removable prism that you can upgrade to different finders. So the one that I have on here is the HP finder which is the high point. You can even change out your focusing screens. I'm talking customization through the roof. This is a professional 35 millimeter SLR camera. If I were to describe the shooting experience of the Nikon F3 in one word, it has to be luxurious. And I really mean it when I say that. I mean all of the Nikon AIS lenses that you get for this camera are buttery smooth. Uh, you can really, really change out the focusing screen. So if you have trouble seeing and maybe you wear glasses, different finders, different focusing screens can allow you to have a much better time focusing. The shutter sounds amazing. I mean, listen to this. I don't mind wasting the frame. I would take this camera over the Canon F1 any day of the week. I'd take it over the Minolta XK. I'd take it over pretty much any other 35 millimeter SLR. It's, in my opinion, just the most smooth and the best shooting experience of a film camera that I personally have ever shot with. And I've shot through a ton of different 35 millimeter SLR cameras. Now I'm gonna give you guys a couple of tips on what I do to maximize my quality with this camera. And I'll also touch on different lenses and accessories that you need to get for this camera because it's going to elevate your experience that much more. But before we get into that, guys, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, as a photographer in 2023, one of the best ways to stick out from the crowd is to create your own professionalized website. Luckily, Squarespace has a ton of award-winning templates that you can use to get started within minutes. You can create your own portfolio page, you can create an e-commerce shop, as well as a blog, all within one website. Not to mention one of the newer features, the video section, where you can directly upload video content 
send using either a link or a direct upload straight to your website's URL. So if you guys want to get started with your own personalized website, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout and you guys can receive 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. All right, so back to the video here. First things first, let's talk about lenses. Now, I own a total of three different lenses, two of them being wide angle, one of them being kind of narrow, but not super telephoto. For me, the Nikon F3 is a documenting camera, whether it be street photography, photojournalism, or maybe even just documenting your daily life or family. Having a camera like this that feels luxurious and makes you want to go out to shoot is extremely beneficial because you're never going to get tired of it. And just with how well the F3 is built, I mean, this camera is gorgeous, you guys. It is going to last you a lifetime. So it's worth investing in some really good glass. And these next three lenses are the ones that I personally recommend. The first one here being the lens already mounted on the camera. This is the Nikon 28 millimeter 3.5 lens. Now I found myself shooting this lens a lot, especially when I took this camera to LA and Disneyland. Uh, something about that wide angle feel paired with some Portra 400 and the really, really nice metering in the F3, it really creates some amazing photographs. This is perfect for street photography, just documenting your different travels and vacations. And overall, the 28 millimeter lens is a lens that is still very accessible. Now, of course, this is the 3.5 version. And so this one is a little bit cheaper compared to the 2.8 version of the lens but you want to make sure to keep in mind for the f3 you get the ais lenses and that's going to have that little cutout here on the side to make sure that it mounts to your camera correctly but that is the first lens you guys the gorgeous 28 millimeter 3.5 lens next up we have the lens that is probably on my camera about 50 percent of the time and that is the oops a little dirty nikon 35 millimeter 2.8 so just like this one this is the ais model and this one is extremely extremely good with it being 2.8 it's a very sharp lens there is something very special about setting this lens to 5.6 pre-focusing anywhere between three to five feet and going out to make your street photographs. Your subjects look like they are just popping from the background. It is an amazing, amazing lens. It's probably one of the freaking hidden gems of all of the Nikon lenses. It's one that I really, really enjoy. And so, you know, if there's one lens that I would recommend for this camera the most, it's the Nikon 35 2.8 AIS. Uh, again, these are pretty inexpensive online and that's another great benefit for this camera. You could probably pick the body up as well as these three lenses for a lot cheaper than you would be able to when you would pay for something like a Leica definitely worth checking out you guys as you can see in these photos the 35 2.8 is a heavy hitter and you do not want to miss out on this one and folks the last lens that i have for this camera is one that is probably the one that i use most for portraits and that is of course the nikon 50 millimeter 1.4 now the 50 millimeter lens is absolutely versatile. You can use it for portraits, uh, being that it is a 1.4 max aperture lens, you can shoot this with low light. I take this lens a lot with me when I know I'm gonna have a lot more time to set up composition. And you guys, you really can't go wrong with a 50 millimeter lens. Personally, I feel like every one of your cameras should have a 50 millimeter lens either on the camera half the time or just onto this side because it's one of those focal lengths that is gonna be extremely versatile for both portraits, landscapes, and street photography. Just like the other two lenses extremely extremely sharp and the size as well all of them are extremely small so you're not going to have huge lenses for your camera which can get in the way of shooting now as for accessories you guys the only two things that i would really put on here that i feel like they actually need is a nice high quality strap this one is from shoot film co as you guys can see and uh, this green strap man really complements the black camera body another really cool accessory that you can pick up and again these are all optional is a soft shutter release button on the top here i just have my classic king japes shutter button right here that i have from years and years ago i've been using this thing for forever but that's pretty much it for accessories you guys i would say keep the camera bare bones keep it simple you don't want to put too many things on it to take away from its actual value and the last thing that i want to talk about you guys are just a couple of tips that i would have 
for this camera if you are considering picking one up, which I definitely think you should. 2023 is going to be the year for the Nikon F3. I'm telling you guys, this is my go-to film camera this year. It's gonna be the one that I shoot most with, and as I work through this body of work that I'm trying to create, I'm probably gonna shoot this an equal amount with the Bessa R2A to create that body of work. The first tip that I have though, you guys, is to carry extra batteries. This takes those LR44 button cell batteries. You can get them at any Walgreens, you can get them at Walmart, Target, any drugstore really will carry these batteries, but it's a good idea to carry an extra pair because the camera is reliant on battery for the shutter speeds up to one two thousandths of a second. It does have a mechanical shutter speed, I believe, of one sixtieth of a second, which is great if your battery goes out, but I found myself in situations where for some reason, for whatever it is, the battery battery died and I didn't have one ready to go. So make sure you keep an extra pair of batteries. They're super cheap, they're like two to three dollars in your bag at all times when you go out to shoot this camera because you really never know when it's going to die. My second tip folks would be to experiment with different focusing screens. Now I used to have a rule of thirds focusing screen in my Nikon F3 which was great because it definitely helped me with composing but honestly if you want to get the best focusing experience the split prism focusing screen is going to be the best because it's going to accurately tell you if you are in focus or not. Similar to a rangefinder there is an effect where you line both of them up and it is in focus. So definitely recommend the split focus finder. If you have something else, uh, you know, you might want to look into it on eBay. They're pretty inexpensive still. And as long as it's for the Nikon F3, it's going to work and it's going to fit. But that is the one that personally I would highly recommend. I'm telling you right now, the F3 is one of those cameras that are going to go down as the greatest of all time. Personally, I put this up there with the Leicas. I put this up there with the Contax T2s, the T3s. The F3 has that status in my opinion. And so it's a workhorse. Definitely highly recommend you guys check it out. If you can find one this year, pick it up. But that's going to wrap it up for me, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. But that's going to be it for me. I'll see you in the next one. As always, middle to game. Whew.